Hey everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? I hope that you went over today. I did Joy Party TV with Patrice Evans. It's my other channel where I do my belly dance therapy and I do my message. And it's on Thursdays, every Thursday, okay? So the goal is to get it here at five o'clock and to get this here at seven. I wanted to come live today. So I hope some of you come by. Um, I haven't heard from you all that a whole lot. So I don't know what's gonna happen at this time of the night. But I just, just wanted to go live and tell you what's on my heart naturally. Like, I didn't want to have to edit anything or, you know, have anything all perfectly prepared. But what I did have is I always go by what the Holy Spirit leads me. And what God wanted me to talk to you about today in terms of the mind, this is focused on talking about your mind. Hi, how are you? Um, I wanted to hear what you needed. Because my gifting is really on the spot. I could do a lot of healing on the spot. I could do deliverance on the spot and do so much, you know, on the spot. Um, I also listen to the Lord to tell me what you might need. But the best thing is to really be interacting with you. So if you are available at this time to go live sometimes, I hope that we could do live because I really want to hear your requests. Some of you already know that if you tell me what you want, I create videos around it. Okay, so I'm going to kick this off by telling you what the Lord led me. And then I want to hear your, um, your needs and what you need for me to do. And I can do videos specifically answering your questions. Okay. So once again, um, Thursdays are the days where I'm going to be healing, healing you through YouTube here, body, mind, and spirit. So the spirit and the body are on my other channel, my, on, um, joy party TV with Patricia Evans on that, on my online ministry. And here is the mind. Okay. But the whole thing, we're going to be doing it all through the Lord. Okay. Receiving Jesus as your Lord and savior. So please go on to that channel. If you want to know more about, you know, being guided and, you know, I'm a preacher, pastor, God has led me to do that, anointed me to do so. And I could lead you into the prayer of salvation. I can help you in that way. And here I'm still doing it that way, but it's more clinical and it's more specific in that way. Okay. All right. So I want to talk, start, I'm going to start talking about the things that God put on my heart to talk to you about. And if you start coming in as I'm talking now, or if you get this later, please, please write in the comments and tell me what you need. Okay. All right. I can't, I'm not, I'm just going to keep letting the Lord tell me until you do. So tell me what you need as it pertains to your kingdom spouse, and finding your kingdom spouse and learning on what it is you need to do or what you need to be looking for for your kingdom spouse. I have so many videos here on that, okay? So right now, I want to take a little pause and just a live. And what I want to talk to you about is what God's been talking to me about. And it is about Christianity and therapy and healing. Um, you know, the Lord is showing me that it's time for me to do a revolu revolution where we need to combine the two. I've watched so many people falling. Excuse me, y'all. I watch so many people falling and I've seen so many people who are in ministry falling, people in marriages. They are building so much, but they're building um, with a hollow inside, if you will. OK, so the inside is hollow. And my husband and I were talking about how we have a blended family and the things that we did to raise our children and how much we did outwardly or inwardly. You know, if you're focused on always if you're focusing on your outward appearance and on what you achieve outwardly. Or if you're here, say hi. Or if you're doing all those things, or if you are focused on that, then you will achieve them. But that does not mean that you're fully adjusted at all. That doesn't mean that you will be able to sustain it. If you remit, if, um, if you are, if you renege on taking care of your body, your mind, and your spirit, that has been my motto, my whole, like for over 30 years, I've been talking about this. It's time to reform the church um, to um, have a revolution in the church where we start focusing on all of ourselves holistically, body, mind, and spirit. And if you've been with me for a while, this you've heard me talk about this for many, many, many years. You know, we're going to be transformed to be more like Christ every day. And we're going to be healed and transformed body, mind, and spirit. We're a holistic person. Okay. So God made us that way. So if we focus on raising our kids on one side only, or, you know, raising ourselves, cause I had to re-raise myself. Some of us have to re-raise ourselves. We need to be keeping in mind that we're holistically a being that is a body, a mind, and a spirit. Okay. If you do not 
let me just bring you closer to me so you can see me. My, I just feel like I want y'all to, let me see if I can, I don't want anything to fall. <laughs> there. I just want you to get a little bit closer to me. Yeah, I'll let y'all see some of the things that I have here. Every time I move this, it falls. So I don't want to move it too much. There. <laughs> anyway, so there, it's a little closer to me. There we go. <laughs> um, Christians, it is time for us to stop being so narrow-minded. It is time for us to start being real and honest with who God is and what he has for us in the kingdom, what's promised to us in the kingdom. And we need to stop picking at each other about discernible matters, like things that, you know, if God told them to do it, what do you care? Right? This whole world's going to be over and we're going to end up with a new heaven and new earth after the millennium anyway. So what do you care? If God said to do it, it's none of your business. Let them do what God told them to do. And if God didn't, God will take care of it. We're supposed to be doing the Great Commission, right? Right. And what God is showing me is that we need to be, first of all, knowing that God loves us. That's our that's the message God has been sending. It's an overarching thing that he just won't stop telling me to let you know that he loves you. The message today and on, on, on the online church was about how God loves you. But what God also told me, just so I can put a, let you know what bring you up to speed for my Easter message and all the messages, is that he has given me the wisdom and the discernment to be able to tell why people do what they do, what's going on in these last days, all these things. And I help you based on my wisdom and discernment. In these last days, people want to hear what they want to hear, but they also do what they want to do. And then they're following the devil, which is the opposite of what God is. The devil doesn't love them. The devil doesn't care about them. And there is a language and a mindset that the devil leads them into. Okay. So when they have that mindset and they have that, they have his spirit in them, then they actually have the language of the devil. And we know it as being narcissistic, sociopathic, um, psychopathic. These are selfish, lack of empathy, personality traits. And that's what we talk about on this channel. If you do not put the spiritual with the mind and the body, all of it together, you're going to miss a piece. You're going to be moving forward to do these things outwardly, and you will be hollow and missing pieces in the inside. And then if the enemy wants to mess with you on the outside, you can fall because you're not grounded. So you need every piece of yourself grounded. So when he comes against you, I didn't say if, when the devil comes against you, you're strong. Not only that, but you represent the God that's supposed to be in you. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know, let me know. And I can say it here in this, this, on um, this uh, video as much as I can on my church. Okay. I can do it here too. But, um, you should be sounding like the Lord in the way that you talk. Okay. Why does it matter? I'll tell you in a minute. Um, and you should be listening for people who sound like the Lord in the way they talk. Not only the way they talk, the way they act, everything that they're doing should sound like it's coming from the kingdom, okay? That is the basis to everything we do on this channel. If you want to rage war against the spirit behind narcissistic abuse, we have to start with which God are you following? Are you following? So if you're following the one and true living God who gave his only begotten son, he loved the world so much that he gave his son and died for us, and you want to receive him in your heart, because the moment you do, the Holy Spirit lives in you and you are part of the kingdom. And now everything you do will be in the kingdom. Okay. Those who don't are already condemned and they, they already have a God by default. Your God is the devil. So you just do, you don't even know you're doing things for the devil. You talk like him, you like him, you like the world. You do. So when we are going out looking for the person that we want, our kingdom spouses, we must sound like God in our hearts, which comes out of the mouth, what comes out of the mouth, whatever, whatever's in the heart is what comes out of the mouth, right? So we need to be putting in our heart the things of our faith, God. We need to be reading the Bible. We need to be knowing the, the things of the Bible. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it will bring to memory the things of the Bible. Because guess who wrote the Bible? The Holy Spirit, all right? So you should be saying things and being grieved by the things that are of our kingdom. So that's how you should be. So you should be attracting people because you are 
aligned. And I'm not talking about legalism, legalism. I'm talking about joy and, and the stuff that's really from our faith, not the fake stuff that we've been hearing uh, all throughout these our lives. You know what I mean? This fake church that we've been hearing where it's all about condemning and making you feel bad and all that awful stuff. God is a loving God. He's sending me to tell you that he loves you. He loved you so much that he gave his son and we just celebrated that. So you are loved just the way you are. He loves you. He says, come as you are. Because once God get, is in your heart, the Holy Spirit, then he will give you the ability to be everything that you were meant to be. Hallelujah. So that's you. Now, you're looking for a kingdom spouse. What are you looking for, y'all? You're looking for people that look like you and sound like you, right? Well, the way you're going to find out the Lord is revealing to me in these last days is language. Okay? Because the spirit that's in these other people would be the enemy. And what do you think the language will be? It's going to sound like the world. It's going to sound like the Babylonian kingdom. It's going to be all about the outside, getting better on the outside. Look at show, either they're going to be bragging about how well they've done outwardly, the things they've gotten. And this, these are shallow people with hollowness in the inside. They're not healthy. So they have to find their identity in their car, in their jobs, in their this, in their that. These are signs of narcissistic traits. Do you have to be a narcissism, narcissist rather, to have, speak like one and act like one? No, you don't actually. Some people sound like it because they were raised with a narcissist or they had to survive in that world. So we're learning. We're doing a lot in the season talking about if you sound like it, okay? If you're making the mistake of giving off this red flag when you're not really a narcissist. So there are others like that that aren't, but they sound like it. But what would make you sound like the world? Now, if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you could be not in the word as much. You're in the world as much. It's what's in your heart. And what's in your mind, that's going to come out. So you may not have been reading the word as much. You're not spending time with the Lord because your language sounds like the world. Or you really are in the world. Whether Even if you say you're Christian, you could still really be in the world. Because a lot of people are not Christians. Because they we've had leaders that have not been real lately. And they've been letting people think that they're Christians when they're not. The only way to be a Christian is to... to when you're talking to God, it's called praying when you talk to God, right? Whenever you talk to God, it's praying, right? So you're praying the prayer of salvation, which is the sinner's prayer. You're saying, I repent of my sins. I believe that you are God in the flesh, Jesus. I believe you died for my, my sins and the world's sins. And I believe you're alive today. Come in my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I can lead you in that prayer. If you've never done that, you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't proclaimed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and in doing that, you can have that wrapped up in repentance. If you've never, ever done that, you won't be going to heaven. I don't care what pastors have told you. I'm here in times pastor to tell you the truth so that you can truly go to heaven. And until then, you can truly connect with your family, the kingdom. You know what we sound like so that you know who to follow as a pastor. You know who to be friends with, and you know who's your kingdom spouse. Do y'all hear me? So every video is about this, about training you with wisdom and discernment to know the difference between those in the kingdom and those who aren't. And even those in the kingdom sometimes say things they shouldn't be saying the wrong way because they're not uh, uh, embedded in, they're not really connected to their faith. So I want to make sure that you're on the right page with me. You understand that a lot of Christians are not getting the therapy. They're not healing themselves inwardly, but yet they're doing things on the outside themselves. And so even though they have received, they're not doing the work inside to grow. And so they sound like the world. And the Bible calls that renewing your mind. Okay. So these are lots of reasons why it could be hard to get your kingdom spouse, because you might be coming across as a narcissist saying certain things that are rude and not very empathic, or you are noticing others are, okay? We are in the last days and the hearts are waxed cold. Most people will default to being selfish and only doing what they want and not having empathy. This is why we have to train ourselves to continue to have empathy. It's always been the case my whole life, but these are the days where it's been the hardest. People have been the meanest in the sense that they've been so cold and nonchalant. The meanness that I see in these last days is more of an apathy that's worse than anything. Because apathy look is like you don't care about anything. How do you motivate them? You know, I'm a certified teacher. I've been able to motivate any child in how, but I see kids that are not even mo as unmotivatable. You know, like it's that's a word. 
So, but they still want love. You know, you want to be um, selfish. You want to do your own thing. You want things your way, but, but yet you want love. You say you're a Christian, but you don't even know if you're saved. And um, you're not going to work on yourself because all you need is spirituality and religion. That's all you need, right? As long as I'm going to church, doing religion, and I'm praying, I don't need any help. And I'm God's going to just give me my kingdom spouse from the sky. And all I got to do is just keep on listening to the prophets that are telling me I'm getting my kingdom spouse and just keep on. And this is the deal. If I just take the person, then I got my kingdom spouse. See, that doesn't work either. Just because you can actually decide someone's your kingdom spouse doesn't mean they're your kingdom spouse either. You literally need therapy. You need coaching. You need guidance. You need pastors. You need someone to help you be whole, body, mind, and spirit. To be a fully adjusted adult is what you need to be. And then you need to be looking for guys and girls that are like you, fully adjusted adults. So you're adjusted to the world around you. You're adjusted to the things that are going on in this world. You're adjusted to being able to pay bills. You're adjusted to the fact that you know, you need to have a regimen of reading the Bible, the inside stuff that no one ever sees. You don't have to have it on YouTube. You don't have to have it on your TikTok. Not everybody has to see everything you're doing because then you guess what the Bible says. Still stands, even with AI here, even with everything. He's the same. He says, you get your reward already. If you tell the world you're fasting, you tell the world you're doing everything, then you're, you already got your reward. Some things need to be doing it, be done in private so that God can reward you in heaven. This is the deal. You need to be connecting more than just your mind, more than just your spiritual. You need to be doing your body. You need to be having all of yourself healthy on the same level at the same time. Because we're seeing a lot of people in the faith falling because they were all only doing things on the outside and they were actually decaying inside. Can I just let that sit there for a second? Come on, y'all. We all looking out there and we know what's going on out there. They're decaying inside, but they're the ones with the platforms. They're the ones that the devil rose, raised up. We'd say, we think it's God. And of course it's God because God is uh, omnipotent. He's the one that decides who's going to be king, who's not. So he allowed it. But what spirit's really behind these people? I'm here to teach you wisdom and discernment so you know what spirits are behind people. So you do not just pick this person as your kingdom spouse because you heard and it's been two years and it's time. OK, it's time when God says it's time. And trust me, I've been there. It's very painful. It's very lonely. It's one of the worst pains in the world. And I'm telling you a lot right now. But the Lord tells me to talk a lot about attachment styles. When you still are struggling with this insecure attachment style, which usually you can tell you have one when being alone is like the, the like you're dying. When you feel that loneliness, like you're dying, there is an insecure attachment style that you're dealing with. How do you heal? Well, you're going to need a coach. You're going to need a therapist. You're going to need a, someone, a pastor, someone to help you work through it. These kingdom spouses that are out here that God is about to connect, the only ones that are going to be connecting are the ones working on themselves. And I know the Holy Spirit is sending you here because he told you to work on yourself because he's talking to me. The Holy Spirit is talking on a high level right now. He's been talking to me on high levels right now. And yes, it's not a coincidence that he's like said it to you and now he's saying it to me. And it's amazing because whoever has the Holy Spirit in them, we're aligned with it. So listen, getting the kingdom spouse, this is not something that the world does. The world says, well, I got the car, I got the looks, I got the degree, I got the stuff so now I could get the girl or I could get the guy. You know what I mean? That's the world. And then what's going on in the inside is dead, empty, nothing. Come on now. If you want a relationship the way I'm going to help you get a relationship, then she's going to find out, guys, what's going on behind that car. Because you're not thinking. You're thinking so short-lived because of this dopamine and the um, the pain of being alone that you just want to get the person. You think everything else is going to be like Disney. See, that's a lie of the devil. What we're trying to do, like, and what I want to leave you with to prove to you that you can do this. I'm going to give you an exercise that's going to help you do it on your own until you do get therapy or until you do go with a coach. Now, this is you need therapy when you have a very severe trauma um, situation where you need long-term help with that thing until you can feel better about it. And then a coach brings you to thriving, okay? So while I have the anointing and ability to do breakthrough spiritually, help you with some therapy, um, probably a lot. I can help you with a lot of that uh, because of the natural Hayoka impact, the natural and the anointing. 
I'm my goal is to get you to a thriving level, you know, not just surviving. Okay. So you can be coming to me in a survival level, meaning I just got out of that relationship or I just got myself to a better place. I just got this. So now I'm going to take you and we're going to go to a thriving level, right? But you don't want to stay in a victim or survival level forever and then think you're going to get your kingdom spouse. And you don't want to get a kingdom spouse that's in a, in, in a victim or surviving level. You want to be in a thriving level and you want to meet somebody at a thriving level. Okay? So this is the thing I want to leave you with where you could do it on your own. I want you to think of something that you've been wanting for a long time or you've always wanted it. And now you you find yourself being the kind of person that, well, I want this thing, so I'm going to go to school for it. I'm going to make sure I get the rest I need. I'm going to prepare for it. If it was a fitness thing, you worked out. It was a triathlon or whatever. And you prepared yourself for it. You did all the things. You did not renege on everything you had to do to get it, including faith and prayer and patience. And then you did well. Whatever that thing is in your life, it could be a degree. It could be something sporty. It could be whatever it is you did. Match that same mentality and cadence and drive and bring that into relationships. You can fight and work hard for relationships and do all that you can do prior to meeting them because it's when it's similar to it, it, like a business person. It's when preparation meets opportunity. You've got to do that background work so when God does have that person in front of you, you don't blow it. So there's work you need to be doing and only you and God knows where you're, you are, but pray about it and say, Lord, what do I need to heal in myself so that when I meet the person I'm healed? Maybe there's some residue, we call it, because you might have a little bit and then it takes an, being in that relationship to fully, you know, get your full self, you know, because you're going to grow together some. But to, to think that you're just going to do like Disney, you're just going to do put all that energy in all the other areas of your life and seem like a, an adjusted adult in those ways, but you're not a fully adjusted adult in, in the ways that are internal, the way that you think, the way that you speak, the way that you see the world, your patience, your spiritual growth. Like, are you self-soothing or do you get upset really easily? Like, do you know how to communicate well? This is maturity. How do you handle things? Are you um, are you addicted to the things of that God created? Or the things that man created even, like gaming or toys or things over human? Do you, do you mask, do you hide behind things and not want relationships with a human being? Because that's not a fully adjusted adult either, you know? So if you're not going to work on that side of yourself and then God brings that person, you're thinking so short-sighted by thinking, I, I got to just, just meet that person and then it'll all be good then. We'll just like hide in ourselves. Those are dysfunctional, toxic relationships that end badly. And if they don't end, that's actually worse than if they end. If they don't end, that's worse than if they don't end, than if they end. Because if they don't, that means they're dying inside and they neither one of them refuses to deal with it. So they're just going to kind of like living dead almost. They're miserable. They just don't want to get out and grow and feel the pain of growing. So when you break up, you cry in your pillow for six months or three months, and then you grow, you're pruned, and now you can grow. Amen? But if you don't work on things and you go to the race, you can pull something, right? If you're just thinking, I want the race, I want the race, I want the race, I want the job, I want the job, I want the thing, you get it. I've gotten things and I wasn't ready, right? You get it, and now they want you to perform and do the thing. And they, they find out it's more embarrassing that when you get there, that you can't sustain it. So if you are working hard for other things so you can sustain it for years, why not do it in your love? And that's what Christians I've noticed are not seeing you do. Put that same effort in the back end stuff as you're waiting for the kingdom spouse. It is not just a spiritual thing. This is a body, mind, and spirit thing. This is a growing up and you're not perfect. Don't be sitting around looking for them to be perfect because you're not. Take care of yourself. Grow. Cry. Be embarrassed that you did things wrong so you can get it right. It's better to be embarrassed with a therapist or a coach or someone you love or a pastor 
then to have that in front of the relationship and ruin the relationship that God blesses you with. And God loves you so much, he's going to keep that kingdom spouse from you until you're ready. And I know the Holy Spirit sent you here. I know he did because I know that's how God works. He's not just saying you're going to get a kingdom spouse and that's it. There's no way the same God I serve in the kingdom is doing that because he doesn't do that with nine months of getting pregnant, of, of growing a baby. He doesn't do that with anything. When he's putting your ministry, he always prepares you for everything that's good. So to say that you're just waiting for your kingdom spouse and you're not doing any therapy, you're not doing anything in the traumas that you have, you don't even know who you are. What do you think you're going to talk about when you get together? You, the stuff you've been through, the therapy you've been through. You need a therapist to help you sort it out so you know what to talk about. They're going to get to know you. That's what that whole thing is about. If you don't know you, what you're going to talk about? If you're still carrying things from the toxic family you're in, you're going to do it to the girl, you know, speaking to the guys. So put the energy in to preparing for when God brings your kingdom spouse, just like you would with anything else that you want to be successful with long term. So if you do that inner work and you meet her or if you meet him, then you already are a comfortable, full, adjusted adult. She can talk about any topic. It won't blow. It won't make you upset. The, the triggers aren't there. Um, you know, you definitely won't be bringing the problems to the table because you did your work. But also when you do your work, you can detect with wisdom and discernment if they've done theirs. And that's how you get a healthy relationship. Kingdom marriages that now can go on because you're going to live together. You're going to hear each other's stuff every day. These things are going to come out. So you're going to have to deal with them before you blend your life with somebody. If it sounds cliche, it's it's not. It's the truth. And so what's the most frustrating thing about being a relationship coach and a Christian matchmaker is that people are taking this part of their life seriously. They really are going by the Babylonian kingdom and the lies of the devil on how to meet their love. They want kingdom spouses, but they want to get it the world's way. And they're going to end up with divorces the world's way. Because you didn't go the kingdom's way. The kingdom's way, we do premarital counseling. We do a courtship. We do pre preparation. We go to the pastor. We learn about ourselves. We heal from ourselves. The kingdom spouse thing, y'all got to start, you know, opening up your eyes to realize Christians need therapy, coaching, and counseling so that they can prepare for meeting their kingdom spouse so that this could be a lifelong thing like anything else in your life. Okay? So I came on to tell you that. And I want you to comment below on what you think of this. And I hope this helped you. And the other thing I want to say is please write down any questions you have that you've been struggling with, with raging work. It's a narcissistic um, spirit behind narcissistic abuse. If you're, even if you're not a Christian, I want to hear what you have. If you are a Christian, I do want to help you. Okay. Well, God bless you. You can tell that this is something that near to dear to my heart. I've blessed so many people with it. And um, I just think more people need, more Christians need to understand that we are more than just the spirit and sometimes the mind, but I don't feel like we're, you, we're doing the right things in our mind. And that's why there's a massive falling away. We are not renewing our minds is the Christian way to say therapy and, um, you know, Christian therapy and knowing what God believes and growing and co committed to continual growth. And then you get in a marriage that is continue, committed to continual growth. Come on. This is not just meeting somebody and just having, we're not hooking up like the world. We're actually trying to have a lifelong relationship with someone till death do us part. So let's think ahead about this. Think about it. This is even more important than the job because this is till death do you part. The job may be seasonal, but you're putting more in the job by getting a four-year degree or you're doing this or maybe you're getting training or you're getting a printancy, printance, or you're waiting. You know what I mean? You're doing all this stuff for something that may not last, but with the marriage, the goal was for it to last a lifetime, but you're not putting a fraction of that work in that. Do y'all get my point? Comment below and let me know if you agree. And if you feel this, if you feel like you've had this experience with relationships where you didn't put that work in and you know why it didn't fail, didn't work. And I'm here to help you do that. Every video on here is to help you prepare. Okay. So Lord, please bless them, keep them and protect them. If you have not come into the family of Christ, the Lord's like, don't tell them now, send you to the online church. Okay. Go onto um, Joy Party TV with Patricia Evans on those videos. At the end of him, I'm sharing the gospel with you. God bless you. I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Bye.